Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Ever since August, I've acquired so many new books, so I really wanted to do a haul today. I like really rarely ever do hauls because I feel like my book buying can be all over the place, but just since I moved, I got rid of so many books and of course I just went right back to buying new books because I had the space. So that's what happens. It's all good. I'm just here to talk about all of the books that I've acquired that I'm so, so excited about. And I've read some of them. I haven't read some of them. Probably haven't read more than I have read. And let's just talk about them because I just think the hauls are so fun and I'm excited to like finally be doing one. Pretty much I'm just going to include anything that I've gotten from the August time period on. So the first book I'm going to start with is Vicious Spirits by Kat Cho, which is a sequel to Wicked Fox. And now I love this series. Wicked Fox actually was on my top 10 books of 2019 list and it's just so much fun. It's kind of like based on a Korean K-drama and I've been starting to watch some K-dramas. So it's just been a really good time and like the pacing and just the dramatics, so, so good. So in Wicked Fox, we have Mi Young, who is a Gumiho, a nine-tailed fox who eats the souls of men to survive. However, Mi Young is half human, so she has some humanity in her and she really tries to only eat bad men. However, when her classmate Ji Hoon is in the woods one night while she is there, he kind of gets involved in her life and when she loses her magical fox speed that gives her her gumi whole soul, her and Jihoon must work together for her to get it back within 100 days or else she's gonna die. And it's just phenomenal. So many good family dynamics in here. I really felt like I learned a lot about Korean culture through this book. So I just absolutely adore it. And of course, I'm looking forward to this sequel, which is more like a companion novel because it's kind of a different storyline than Wicked Fox. I'm pretty sure that we follow the goblin dude and his name is Junu. Yes, Junu and Somin. So, and so Junu is a Dokebi, which is like a handsome goblin. And then Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think it's just gonna be a good time. More of that really good drama pacing that I love and yes, I'm excited. And I just like love this color scheme. They look so good together. I'm like trying to remember the order that I purchased all of these. So I think the next books that I purchased In the beginning of September, a lot of sequels rolled in that I was really excited for. The first of that being As the Shadow Rises by Katie Rose Poole, which is the sequel to There Will Come in Darkness. I think this was also on my top books of 2019 list. Phenomenal, and I have not gotten to this yet, but I mean, just look at this stunning cover, and this is going to be a trilogy, which I can't wait. There Will Dark Come in Darkness takes place in a Greco-inspired world in which the prophets always rolled over except for when they disappeared 100 years ago, leaving behind a final prophecy. And their final prophecy said that there will be one prophet who could either save the world or doom it. With chaos on the horizon, five lines are set on a collision course. An exiled prince, an assassin, a dying girl, a once faithful leader, and a gambler. One of them or all of them could break the world and how will their lives come together to either bring in the foretold age of darkness or stop it. And just the prophecy in this is so good. I love story centered around prophecies and it's really interesting always trying to kind of see what they mean, kind of decode them and then see how it goes. So I'm so, so excited for the sequel. I think it's just gonna be phenomenal. Um, I'm was really surprised that this was a debut just because it was told so so well and i just like love the world building and the characters and i just i'm excited to see where it goes next sequel that i have is blood and honey by shelby morin which is the sequel to serpent and dove which i absolutely loved and i like love these covers they're so shiny and cool and there is actually going to be a trilogy i think this was originally going to be a duology but now there is going to be a third book so in serpent and Dove, we follow Lou, who is in a witch that basically exiled herself from Le Dom's Blanche, and now she lives in this town of Cesarine, trying to blend in. However, her life kind of goes awry when a public stunt gone wrong forces her to marry a Chaucer. They're kind of like the religion that has been tasked with hunting down and executing witches um, in order to save his public image. And 
Oh, those were all the character cards that just fell out. And basically they're brought together amongst an ancient war between the church and the witches and as Luke hands and I her growing feelings for the Choster, some choices must be made that will determine the fate of the world. This ended on such like a heart pounding finale. I can't wait to see what happens in this sequel and how feelings will change. So the next book that I purchased, and if you follow me on any form of social media, you will know how much I am freaking obsessed with this series. And that is From Blood and Ash and A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I picked this one up on Kindle, which is why it doesn't have tabs because I would 110% tab it, but I'm probably gonna be doing a reread at some point and I will tab it because obsessed. Yes, my this was like my favorite book of 2020. I am not joking. It's that good. It's that good. Um, so I picked this up on Kindle because I've been seeing good things about it. And then all of a sudden I was like, this is my favorite book ever. So I'm going to, you know, order a physical copy. So here we are from Blood and Ash. This is actually Jennifer L. Armentrout's first high fantasy novel, which I am blown away by because it's literally phenomenal. And it's like a new adult fantasy romance is what I would call it. So there is a maiden chosen from birth to usher in a new era and that is Poppy. Poppy's life has never really been her own. The life of the maiden is solitary. She cannot speak to anyone. She cannot be in any conversations. Um, whenever she is like out in public, she has to be veiled. And of course, she can never experience pleasure. So she's waiting for the day of her ascension, but she would rather be with the guards fighting to protect her home kingdom but really like the choice has never been hers. Basically the fate of the entire kingdom rests on Poppy, which is a fate that she's not even sure that she really wants for herself because the maiden has a heart and a soul and feelings. And then when Hawk, a golden eyed guard, honor bound to ensure her ascension enters her life, destiny and duty become tangled and inseparable with desire and need. And he basically makes her question everything that she's ever believed in, like, <laughs> It's just so good. And then we also have, because that's not enough to intrigue you, a fallen kingdom rising once more, determined to take back what they believe is theirs through violence and vengeance. This book has everything, and like I was really surprised with some of the plot elements because I didn't know them going in, and like things are just done in such a unique, inventive way. And this is the series that basically made me like want to read every adult fantasy romance ever, which is a journey that I have been embarking on, and you'll see that a lot of these books have that kind of flavor. Um, and then this book, just like the sequel, just took it to a whole other level, like, just thinking about these books, like, so, so freaking good. Like, if you pick one book from this haul that you're like, maybe I should read that, I think you should read from Blood and Ash because it will change your life. It will change your life. Okay, enough about that. <laughs> However, because I love it so much, I was inspired on a journey um, to read every book that Jennifer L. Armitrout has ever published so i began on that journey with many many purchases um the first of that being the lux series and these are the bind ups of them so we have lux beginnings which has the first two novels obsidian and onyx lux consequences which has opal and origin the next two books and then lux opposition which has opposition and shadows Opposition is the finale book and Shadows is like a Greek wool, like different POV, PO, POV, <laughs> POV book. I don't know what I was trying to say there. The Lux series follows one, Katie, a book blogger. Sounds kind of familiar, but she spells her name with a Y and it's not booktube, it's book blogging, so we're a little different. <laughs> um, okay, so there's an alien next door to Katie in her new house that she's moved into and he is like really hot <laughs> until he opens his mouth and then he's a jackass. However, she is attracted to him because he's a hot jackass. Um, and there's something underneath the surface that they are attracted to one another. Um, and But he can literally freeze time with a wave of his hand. And like, you know, he does some of his alien stuff to when he freezes time on Katie to save her. They are now connected with this alien connection. So basically like they need to stick together until his alien mojo like fades on her. And thus begins their romance and um yeah i've read up to the third book so far loving it i do have a whole separate vlog series on reading this for the first time that will be coming soon honestly this series is so good i'm convinced that no one writes romance like different Ar armatrout and this one is on the ya side but it's just like filled with so much like good angst it's like that good this was published in like what year 
2014 so like it has like that like early 2010s like angsty vibes but like without all of like the stuff that makes you like question like twilight nowadays it's good and it's still good to this day and i have been truly enjoying my time with the series and miss jennifer l armatrout is now one of my favorite authors which brings me to the next part of my haul the darkest star and the burning shadow i cannot tell you what these books are about because i did not read the synopsis because they are a spin-off to the Lux series and i did not want to be spoiled for the ending of the Lux series and therefore i don't know what these are about i think the next book in the series like just came out actually which miss jennifer l armitrout has had been busy this year she released from blood nash kingdom of blood flesh and fire uh those are big books and now the second the being in Jennifer L. Armitrout's stand, like, you are fed with content. She has so many, like, ebooks and stuff, too. Like, if, if you can't tell, I'm, like, a simp for this woman. So, it's fine. But loving everything I've read by her so far. <laughs> which brings me to my next purchases, which is the White Hot Kiss series. So, we have White Hot Kiss by Jennifer L. Armitrout, Stone Cold Touch by Jennifer L. Armitrout, and Every Last Breath by Jennifer L. Armitrout. I love these covers. I just think they're really cool. Um, so this is the Dark Elements series, and I'm pretty sure that this is a gargoyle in it. It's one of the things. Okay, I'm gonna be back. I'm not as familiar with this, but it matches my eyeshadow. Okay, so one kiss can kill. Layla just wants to be normal. The trouble is, she's anything but normal, and her longtime crush Zane treats her like a little sister. So. Layla is half demon, half gargoyle. I said I knew gargoyle somewhere in there. Um, and she has abilities that no one else possesses. So even though Zane is a warden, part of the race of gargoyles tasked with hunting demons and keeping humanity safe, Layla's kiss will kill anything with a soul, including him. Well, that's a bummer. So enter Roth, a smart-mouthed demon. Who claims to know her deepest, most dangerous secrets, and though Layla knows she should stay away, it's tough when the whole soul thing isn't an issue. So trusting Roth could brand her traitor to the Warden family that raised her and destroy her relationship with Zane, but with a violent demon uprising looming in the distance, kissing the enemy suddenly pales in comparison to the end of the world. I mean, does that not sound phenomenal? Just no words, just like chef kisses everywhere. I... Like I said, I'm a sim for this author. I can't wait to get into the series. I do think I'm going to have like a continuation of my Jennifer L. Armitrout series because I did do a vlog for reading Flood, from Blood and Ash and I came with Flesh and Fire. The Lux vlog is coming soon. I just took a little bit of a break and then I'm gonna go back into the next three books and finish that out and then, so yeah, I'm gonna be doing vlogs for like all of her works because I'm obsessed with her and I also tend to like fly through her books because they're so good. I mean, just reading the synopsis of this, like, we wouldn't want to sit down and just, like, read this as fast as possible. I love her. Okay, what am I buy next? Okay, so I have, I'm gonna take a little break here for some arts. Okay, so these are some art, well, okay, so this is an arc, and this is God's Storm by Coco Ma. This is the sequel to... Shadow Frost. It's about the Kingdom Exaria with Princess Asterin. She has basically like all of the elemental abilities, whereas like most people only have like one or two depending on like where they are, but like the elements aren't just like the natural four. There's like a whole like wheel and you can be like in between. It's pretty cool. Um, and so basically in the first novel, her and her friends set off to hunt a demon, but like it was kind of a setup for her assassination. It was really awesome, just like a very good, solid elemental fantasy book, which I love, it was a classic. And so yeah, in the sequel, um, I got the arc of it, I'm so, so excited. Thank you so much to Blackstone Publishing for sending this my way. I can't wait to read it and support Coco. So there's shocking discoveries, and she's basically forced to make a choice that will change the mortal world forever and maybe even destroy it. And like, there were so many twists and turns in Shadow Ross. It was just such a fun novel, really kept me on my toes, beautiful cover, I mean, look, this one and fun fact that Madison from Princess of Paperback beta read this book so you know I trust her opinion and I can't wait to get into this. The next book I requested an arc for and actually got sent a finished copy and that is The Ones and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow and this is about suffragette witches. I just think that's a really unique and cool concept. So this takes place in 1893. There's no such thing as a witches and there used to be but now it's just nursery rhyme. And if a modern woman wants any measure of power she must find it at the ballot box. 
So when the Eastwood sisters joined the suffragists of New Salem, they began to pursue the forgotten words in ways that might turn the women's movement into the witches' movement. So they dive into magic to help the suffragettes I mean, if that just doesn't sound like so intriguing and cool, I mean, we know the power of the vote because we just had an election and you know what? I had right to vote in that election because of the suffragettes, so. And this is like more of like an adult, I guess this would be like speculative fiction. I don't know how to, how to uh, classify it, but it did come out in October. And thank you so much to Hachette for sending this my way. Next are some pre-orders that I got in. Okay, so this is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, which is a book I've been anticipating for like years because V.E. Schwab started hinting at this like two years ago. And once I heard the concept, I was like, wow, I need that. It's just, it's so cool. I want to read it soon. I mean, like you open the book and it looks like this. Like, what the heck? The cover has like embossed birds on it. And the tagline is, never pray to the gods that answer after dark. So, set in France, 1714, Annie LaRue is a woman that makes a deal with the devil. She wants to live forever, however, the catch with the deal is that no one that meets her will ever remember her. And so she's kind of confined to the solitary existence where she can meet people but they will never remember her so she cannot form lasting connections. And so every year, the devil Luke on her birthday comes to Addie and sees if she's willing to give up her soul and they kind of play the long game of cat and mouse. However, it will be 300 years until she steps into a hidden bookstore and discovers somebody who can remember her name and thus changes everything. So, I mean, this just sounds, <laughs> this concept just sounds so good, so good. Like, I love the Schwab. I've read almost all of her books. I've loved all of them, so I am, of course, so excited for this. So, so excited for this. This is just making me realize how many books I want to read. Next up is Lightbringer by Claire the Bread, which is the finale to one of my favorite trilogies, the Furyborn trilogy. I talked extensively about this in my November TBR. You can check it out there. I will link it above and below. But basically, so this is the finale to the Furyborn series, which I just, I love so much. Like if you love stories with interweaving timelines and angels that are villainous and difficult women who don't always make the right choices and opposing hero and villain arcs like you will love this you will love this so there is this world and there's this prophecy that there will be a blood queen and a sun queen that are the only two people that possess the power of all seven elements one will bring about the destruction of the world and what will bring about the saving of the world. So when Riel is in a competition with her best friend Audric who happens to be the crown prince, he is set upon by assassins and she accidentally exposes her abilities to do all seven types of elemental magic to the public and thus she is basically forced to go through seven trials to prove her mastery of the elements and that she is the foretold sun queen and not the blood queen. And now, a thousand years in the future, the legend of Queen Riel is literally just a legend to Eliana Farakora, who is trying to survive in the Undying Empire, and she is a bounty hunter for the Empire, thinking that it keeps her safe. However, that all changes when her mother is taken captive by the Empire forces, and she joins up with a rebel group to try and rescue her. And thus, they are set upon their journeys, but it's so much more than that. I love this so much. I think I'm going to be rereading this entire trilogy this month because I just love it. So, there you go. The next pre-order that I got is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. My lady, Carrie Maniscalco, is so talented. I love the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, which is honestly, from the description, I never thought that it would be one of my favorite series, but it is. I love it so much. Like, Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell, one of my favorite chips. So now we have this new world that she's created and has more of a fantasy element to it, which I'm so, so excited about. Again, this is on my November TBR and I am currently reading it. I'm on page 13, so I've gotten so far. And this actually takes place in Sicily, which is so, so cool. So I was texting Maddie, who is very Italian, and I was like, people are gonna love this because they have like a Nona and they're in Sicily and they have all these Italian words. So if you're someone that has an Italian heritage, I think you'll really love this book, just like for the emotional connections you can make with the characters. Um, but even so, just like, <laughs> I literally underlined the first paragraph because I was like, whoa. Like, shh, shh. 
Korean men have just has a way with words. Also, like, let's look at this quote page. Sorry, I'm like not focusing as much on like the synopsis because I feel like I just gave it when I filmed my November TV. I'll give, I'll give a quick little rundown. But anyways, let me read you this first paragraph because I was blown away. Outside, wind rattled, the wooden chimes in warning. In the distance, wave crashed against the shore, the frantic whispers of water growing louder as if the sea was a mage summoning violence. On this date, for nearly a decade now, the storm followed the same pattern. Next, thunder would roll quicker than the tide with lightning cracking electric whips across an unforgiving sky. The devil demanded retribution, a blood sacrifice for power stolen. It wasn't the first time he'd be cursed by witches, nor would it be the last. And on the back, it says, I understood why some thought kissing one of the wicked was addictive. Each time his tongue touched mine, it felt as if the ground beneath me quaked, like we were a cataclysmic event that shouldn't be. I mean, if that doesn't intrigue you. Uh, this is a story about twin witches, however, one of them is found murdered. And so, Amelia kind of sets out on a mission to find out who murdered her sister and a mission for vengeance when one of the wicked, the princess of hell, named Wrath, comes and basically says that he is tasked with the same mission, but nothing with the wicked is as it seems. So, like, it's already, I'm 13 pages in already phenomenal i can already tell i'm gonna love it this is like my my ish you know i love it next up we have a purchase that i've read and made in barnes and nobles and that is bring me their hearts by sarah wolf and this is about zara who is an immortal unaging solar who is bound to the witch night singer and zara longs for freedom from the woods that they hide in however her heart is in a jar under night singer's control so night singer asks zara's for a prince's heart in exchange for her own until she goes under court cover into the court um, but night singer will destroy zara's heart rather than see her tortured by witch hating nobles if she is caught so the crown prince hates the royal court as much as it loves him so no one can challenge him until the arrival of lady zara and things progress from there. Okay, and so now these last few books are books that I've gotten in my attempt to find more adult fantasy romances because I'm just in love with the genre. We have Fortuna Sworn and Restless Slumber by KJ Sutton. I mean, look at these covers. I love them. I actually just finished this book today, but I've been loving this series so much. Another one that I won't shut up about. And we have Fortuna Sworn, who is a nightmare, which is basically a creature that can touch you and know your worst fears and be a nightmare out of your worst making. And like, it's just as badass as it sounds. She's the last of her kind. However, her brother has gone missing two years ago and she'll basically do anything to get him back when she's captured by goblins. She comes across this powerful fairy in the black market and he basically offers her an irresistible deal. Fortuna reluctantly leaves her safe existence behind and steps back into the world of creatures and power, but she's, it seems to be clear that she may not have bargained with her heart, but with her very life. I mean, if you love dark phase stories, like, just read this. You won't regret it. It's phenomenal. I love it. The third book is coming out, I think, December 1st, so obviously I'm pre-ordering it. I can't wait to get it, and I'm really, like, enjoying finding these, like, indie books. I think that there's a lot of hidden gems, and so I'm so excited to be, like, exploring the genre in the upcoming months, and I'm usually just reading them mostly in my Kindle, but if I, like, love something enough, I will physically purchase it, which I did here. Um, the next book is kind of a, an exception to that rule, just because I've been wanting it for so long, I just, I just purchased it. And that is The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen. I mean, look at this cover. It's beautiful, and it says one kingdom to save, one kingdom to destroy. I love it. I love it. And I, like, I've literally wanted this for, like, a year, so I was just like, I'm just gonna buy it. The reason I kind of stop myself from buying it is because it is independently published. It's a little bit more on the pricier side, but I was just like, I think I just need to buy it. So I did. So, the tagline is, what if you fell in love with the one person you'd sworn to destroy? So Lara has only one thought for her husband on their wedding day, I will bring your kingdom to its knees. So a princess trained from childhood to be a lethal spy, Lara knows that the bridge kingdom represents both legendary evil and legendary promise. The only route through the storm ravaged world, the bridge kingdom controls all the trade and travel between the lands, allowing his ruler to enrich himself and deprive his enemies, including Lara's homeland. So when she is sent as a bride under the guise of fulfilling a treaty of peace, Lara is prepared to do whatever it takes to fracture the defenses of the impenetrable bridge kingdom. But as she infiltrates her new home, a lush paradise surrounded by tempest seas, and comes to know her new husband, Aaron, Lara begins to question where the true evil resides. Around her, she sees a kingdom of fighting for survival, and in Aaron, a man fiercely protective of his people. As her mission drives her to a deeper understanding of the fight 
to possess the braid. Laura finds the simmering attraction between her and Aaron impossible to ignore. I mean, that's just like what I want. I just, oh my god, I just opened it to a random page. Um, the chapter headers. I guess this is the bridge in the bridge kingdom. Oh my goodness. That's what I'm saying. I feel like I'm finding so many like hidden gems. Like, wow. Okay, I'm so excited to read this. Wow. And like I've said this in my past few videos, I promise it is coming, but I am doing a video on adult fantasy romance books that I want to read. I can't really call it a recommendations video because I haven't read the books myself, but basically just setting up a list of all the books that I kind of want to read over the next few months as I dive into the genre, slowly but surely. Yes. Okay, so that's the end of this haul. There's so many books. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really, really excited about all the book purchases. I really tried to scale back my book purchasing and only buy the books that I'm just like truly so, so excited about. And I really feel like I, even though I bought a lot, these are all a lot of books that I just like absolutely love and the books I've read so far I have adored. That's just the life of being a book collector with the bookshelves. So there you have it. Please let me know if you've read any of these books down below or like what books you've recently purchased. Um, if you've read these books, like let me know what you thought of them and just, you know, let's just chat in the comments. If you have watched this whole video and you've enjoyed it but you don't have anything to say, just leave a heart in the comments and I will really, really appreciate it. And with that, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Okay, let's figure out how to get a thumbnail here. This is only like half of the books. I don't even think I can get more because like I just can't. But, um, well, six of most of the frames, so. Ah! That is a workout. Bye.